Cirque du Soleil Theatrical is pleased to announce the new production of Paramore, the organization's first created specifically for Broadway. This landmark production blended the best of Broadway with Cirque's signature style to provide a new experience for both traditional Broadway musical theater goers and Cirque fans alike. The show had many of the elements beloved on Broadway, a book-driven love story narrative, live musicians, and professional actors in the lead roles, but with the Cirque aesthetics integrated throughout the show. Visionary production design on a grand scale, with world-class entertainment and acrobatic feats that defy the imagination. Premiering on Broadway at the Lyric Theater in New York City on May 25, 2016. One year after the show opened, Paramore's production of Broadway would take its final bow on April 16, 2017. Now that's show business. After rumors and speculation within the fan community, Paramore would finally be restaged and premiered early 2019 at the Neuflora Theater in Hamburg, Germany, only to end up another victim of the 2020 pandemic, closing less than a year after its reincarnation. Created and directed by Philippe Decafle, a collaboration between Cirque and its now defunct theatrical subdivision. I'm young, I want gaiety, laughter, hot cha cha. Cirque du Soleil's first resonant musical theater show on Broadway was themed to the golden age of Hollywood. It had similar themes and elements to Cirque's retired Los Angeles resident show, E. Reese, and shares much of the same creative team, including the director, costume, and set designer. January 14, 2014, Cirque announces the creation of a new division, Cirque du Soleil Theatrical. Scott Zeiger, co-founding partner of Base Entertainment, will serve as president and managing director of the new division. Zeiger will be developing unique theatrical opportunities for Cirque based on traditional theatrical practices. These new productions will be created using Cirque's signature style and aesthetic, but will provide a very different experience for audiences. During his tenure at base, Zeiger helped create many successes, such as the six-year run of Phantom, the Las Vegas Spectacular. His credits also include hit Broadway shows Jersey Boys and Rock of Ages. We've conquered the Las Vegas Spectacle. We've done the Super Bowl halftime show. We have these big top tents that are extraordinary, beautiful custom tents. We have a permanent installation in Disney World never on Broadway. We're not doing circuses. We're going to do the traditional with book, lyrics, and definitive storylines. I'm not going to go to Broadway and rent a theater to present Ka, but I will rent a theater for an original story or licensed book or movie to be turned into a theatrical show. The first two projects announced were an adaptation of the 1974 Broadway show The Wiz, a retelling of The Wizard of Oz with an all-black cast and a Quincy Jones-produced soundtrack, will be co-produced by Cirque's new theatrical division. Tony Award-winning director Kenny Leon staged the television production and signed on for the upcoming Broadway revival in collaboration with Tony winner Harvey Firestein, contributing new material to the original book. After the musical aired live on December 3, 2015, the new Wiz was set for Broadway, scheduled for the 2016-2017 season but sadly never came to fruition. The other show announced was Paramore, and the only one produced by Cirque Theatrical to play Broadway before being folded into another subdivision. Featuring a cast that blends the best of circus arts and musical theater, Paramore transports you to a world of sublime beauty and emotion as it walks the exhilarating tightrope of the heart. In early April, the show's creators decided to replace a lead actor. Bradley Dean was originally cast, but ended up parting ways with the production a few days after the lion's den due to lack of chemistry on stage among co-stars. That left the new actor Jeremy Kushner with only two weeks to learn the script, songs, and choreography before the start of previews. AJ Golden, a Hollywood director looking for his next big star. Hi, my name is AJ Golden. My dream in life is to create the world's greatest film. With the advice from his personal assistant, Gina, AJ discovers a small-town girl in a local speakeasy. Indigo, a red-headed lounge singer looking for something more in life. Played by Ruby Lewis, fresh off, for the record, Baz, a postmodern cabaret inspired by the films of director Baz Luhrmann. Presented by Light, the short-lived Cirque nightclub at Mandalay Bay. More on that later. 
Joey Green, a piano player at the Underground Speakeasy. He is inspired by Indigo writing his music while secretly in love with her. Played by Ryan Bonner. Robbie, the choreographer for AJ's film production, played by Brett Shutford. Gina, AJ's personal assistant, played by Sarah Mill. Leela, the original star of Paramore, fired for being too distracted during filming, played by Kay Cunning. This 38 person onstage cast is made up of 22 acrobats and 16 actors, along with an eight piece band and 30 crew members. Fun fact, a total of 49 people made their Broadway debuts with Paramore. Guy Dubeck and Mark Lessard, known by their creative aliases, Bob and Bill, are known for their ability to blur the lines between genres and styles. They have produced several albums, including Pink Floyd Redux, a collection of remixed songs as well as the soundtrack album for the Cirque show, Kuza. In 2004, Bob and Bill supplied the musical direction and arrangements for Midnight Sun as part of the 25th anniversary celebration for the Montreal International Jazz Festival and the 20th anniversary of Cirque du Soleil. We don't know who's Bob, we don't know who's Bill. Since 2009, they also act as composers for the Cirque, composing the music for Totem, Amaluna, Curious, Hoya, Alavida, Taruk, and Paramore, along with lyricist Andreas Carlson, who wrote the show's title song. In 2001, he won the ASCAP Songwriter of the Year Award as the most performed pop writer on the radio that year. Paramore will mark his debut as a Broadway songwriter. Built over the foundations of the original Lyric and Apollo, today's Lyric combines architectural preservation with state-of-the-art construction and technology. The spirit and character of New York's grandest historic theaters have been maintained and united with the technical amenities of a modern theater. Key historic elements and themes of the original theater are maintained in today's Lyric. In the lobby spaces, an elliptical dome from the Lyric was repurposed as the centerpiece of the new two-story auditorium. On the floor of the main lobby is a magnificent mosaic featuring comedy and tragedy masks inspired by sculptures from the original Lyric facade. Now at 1,896 seats, the new theater is one of Broadway's largest houses. The Lyric reopened as the Ford Center for the Performing Arts in 1997 with the acclaimed musical Ragtime. Time. In 2005, the Ford Center was renamed the Hilton Theater. Its premier production was the musical Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. In 2010, the Hilton was renamed Foxwoods Theater and was home to the bone-breaking production of Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark. In 2014, the theater was purchased by the internationally recognized Ambassador Theater Group and restored to its original historical name. Acrobats, trampolinists, and a fire breather, we welcome the longest, tallest, and widest float in our parade, Dream Seeker, from the world-renowned Cirque du Soleil. To promote the premiere of Paramore, Ruby Lewis, actress of Indigo, sang Paramore on Cirque's Dream Seeker flow at the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade on November 26, 2015. Cirque du Soleil made its long-awaited Broadway debut with the new musical, Paramore. You guys are flying in the same air that Spider-Man and the Green Goblin flew. Preview performances began on April 16th. During previews, the show grossed over one million in its first six performances. And after 31 previews, the official gala premiere was held on May 25th, 2016. Do so you think Cirque has a future on Broadway? For sure, I mean, without a doubt. The Hollywood Reporter. They seem to have gone out of their way to produce as banal and as generic as a musical as possible, featuring atrocious dialogue and forgettable songs. It feels more like a parody than the real thing. Well, we got trouble right here in New York City. I'm talking trouble with a capital T that rhymes with C and that stands for Cucko Knives. Cucko Knives. 
On May 2nd, 2017, the Tony nominators got to spread joy to 25 of the 37 eligible shows, giving multiple nods to box office smashes. However, it was with no great surprise the nominators ignored the mostly reviled Paramore. Cirque du Soleil in Red, a Sony distribution company, announces that the Broadway cast album will be recorded on June 29th and 30th. The original Broadway cast album was released digitally on August 26th, then landed in record stores on September 16th. Includes 18 original tracks, songs, and selections from the show. In the middle of summer, about three months into its run, Paramore announced it would go dark for a few days from August 21st to the 25th. During this time, extensive and very expensive rewrites took place. After poor critical and audience reception, Cirque finally realized the importance of having people involved with the proper experience needed for Broadway. So they called in choreographer Sergio Trujillo and book writer Joe DiPietro. Rewrites to improve the story, removing around 20 minutes. Fixing the flat jokes so they land better. Beautiful new costumes for the main characters described as less Cirque and more traditional Broadway. Making AJ the narrator, giving more story and personality to the supporting characters. A new choreography for the flying machines in a $500,000 sequence that marks the first time drones have been used on Broadway. Depending on where they were seated, some of the audience members have mistaken the flying machines for marionettes on invisible wires, which significantly reduces the impact of a lyrical sequence that sees lampshades take flight. The show's creators will re-choreograph the sequence to make it clear from every seat in the house that there are no wires involved. November 24, 2016, the cast of Paramore performed Hollywood Wiz during the 90th annual Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade, live on NBC. And when many shows benefit from the beginning of the Thanksgiving through New Year's holiday season, Paramore grossed just over $1 million, barely reaching 60% of its potential. Anyone paying attention to the lyrics box office could see that the show with a large cast, orchestra, and significant backstage expenses was showing no signs of building an audience or gaining on its weekly running costs. Paramore, a Cirque du Soleil musical. On Broadway through April 16th only. See it before the credits roll. Eventually, the show closed on Broadway on April 16th, 2017, with a total of 366 performances, grossing $50 million on a $25 million budget. Despite modest box office sales and decent reviews, Cirque was allegedly paid $23 million to terminate its contract early in order to vacate the lyric and allow the necessary renovations for the show's successor. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which had a sold-out track record since opening on the West End. We're not closing because business is bad. Zeiger said in an interview, they have a timeline for the work they want to do, and they made their request. We had a friendly negotiation, and they made us an offer we couldn't refuse. After its Broadway premiere, the honor fell to Hamburg to be the show's first host city outside North America. Paramore Das Musical premiered on April 14, 2019 in Hamburg, Germany. Wow, gelungen. The show garnered praise with excellent reviews from critics and audience alike. Shortly before celebrating its one-year anniversary, the stage theater Neue Flora was temporarily closed and the production of Paramore was suspended. Due to the restrictions imposed in Germany in response to COVID-19, performances were assumed to resume once restrictions were lifted. wanted something more is this what I was searching for people chase me down the street I'm just a name not sure if it's intentional but they make me two-dimensional still I thought I'd be complete once I found fame. My face is in the news, autographs, interviews. I know what you're about to say. She is the girl who has everything. She's got the world upon a string. She's so 
lucky, she should not complain. Well, if I'm so lucky, can someone explain? Why does the girl who has everything still have a heart that's questioning? There must be something more to this life now, I'm sure. And if dreams still come true. Leviosa, not Leviosa. Expecto Patronum!